Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the higher, everybody. Praise the higher. One more time. Praise the higher from whom all blessings flow. Amen, amen. This is your sister Carrie Ann and Yesaya the Christ. Yesaya the Messiah, Yesaya of Nazareth. If you want to know why I call God the higher. And the biblical Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yesaya. I've done a video concerning that one. Greetings to the 12 scattered tribe of Yashahel. Yashahel is the name given to Jacob. Jacob's name was not changed to Israel. The proper name is Yashahel. So I greet all the Hebrew Yashahelites scattered to the four corners of the earth all over. In the diaspora, I greet you all in the matchless name of our soon coming King, Yesiah the Christ, and to the beautiful body of Christ, the church, whom our great King is coming back for without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I greet you all in his glorious name, Yesiah the Christ. All right, you can skip this bit and find the main message. I am going to do some housekeeping. Remember my name, Sister Carrie Ann, it is in solid gray border with a tick by the side of my name. Anybody else pretending to be me is a wicked, dirty demon. You need to rebuke and report them. Please watch a video to the end. Sometime I'll do the sinner's prayer if, if, I, if I've got the time. If not, check the description box. If you are unsaved, if you do not know Yesiah, hallelujah, as the Lord and Savior, please check the description box. Or I leave a little sinner's prayer, you can repeat it. And believe and call on the name of Yesiah the Christ. Some people call him Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's fine. I call him Yesiah. I call him by Hebrew, by his Hebrew name. Call on his name and you shall be saved. Hallelujah. And give your heart and walk right before the king. All right. Um. Uh, thank you for liking the videos. Thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for going in the comment sections and communicating with brothers and sisters. Really, really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so very, very much, brothers and sisters, for that. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, those of you who are brand new to the channel, I welcome you. I pray that this will be the channel of the prophetic for you brothers and sisters just hold on one second hold on yes i pray that this channel will be the channel of the prophetic for you where we will grow hallelujah we will grow together in the in prophecies um and know what is going on what the most high is saying to the church hallelujah all right uh thank you for those beautiful beloveds in the most higher who have blessed me through paypal really 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 appreciate it um a beautiful beloved contacted me this morning says it's a Korean um your paypal look at your paypal i think something you were wrong with it and i went and i checked and i fixed it so my paypal is up and running it's absolutely fine um so if you want to bless me through that you can go ahead and do so if not i still love you just the same and everything is okay all right also i have a little project in the form of um go fund me i will leave the link in the description box in the pin comment section have a little read if your heart tells you um to bless then do it if not again you know prophecies on this this channel is not money orientated brothers and sisters whether you give or not you will still get the prophecies it's just that's it because i work for the savior and um, some people will say to me oh sister karen so why do you ask it's not that i'm asking it's that that it's just that i get email from time to time where some brothers and sisters over the years this is just this is not a one-off over the years and they say sister karen we would like to bless you can we have your paypal can we have this can we have that so that's the case i just put it in the description box so those who want to give just search the description box or the pin comment sections all right so that's what it is brothers and sisters all right we are near we're not only near to the returning of the beautiful glorious messiah Yesiah the christ but we're also near to the revealing of the lawless one the dirty antichrist please understand daniel chapter 7 verse 25 will be fulfilled where satan through the antichrist will seek to change times laws and seasons it will be given to him and also brothers and sisters yes i says pray to be found worthy i believe he's talking about the woman in revelation 12 with the 12 stars in her head the 12 stars on the woman's head represents the 12 seed of jacob the sons of jacob the remnant of jacob that went through the transatlantic slavery that is the reason why you see the woman fleeing with the 12 stars because there is going to be a 
second worldwide exodus. Just like Moses' first exodus, but it is going to be on a much larger scale because the highest people, the 12 scattered tribe, are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth through the transatlantic slavery. And the most that high is going to regather that remnant. People say to me, Sister Carrie Ann, I don't believe you because in 1948, they said God went down into Europe and told the Europeans to go back to their homeland, Israel. That is not true. It is not biblical because for, for starters, Europeans are from the Caucasus mountain. That is why they're called Caucasians. Anyone that is called Caucasian is from the Caucasus mountain. This is research. You can go and check it out. It is truth. All right. So to say that, you know, God is going to bring these people back to their homeland. That is not true. So we know that the 12 tribe of Yeshahel, the 12 tribe of Jacob, amen, that has been hurt, harmed, scattered, dispersed throughout the four corners of, four corners of the earth, a higher is going to regather them through the great worldwide second exodus that is who the woman represents after the second exodus then the sixth seal opens that is Yesiah hallelujah coming in the clouds of glory people said Jesus is coming any day any minute no not true second exodus must it has to happen first without the second exodus Bible I don't know who is that standing up there because I ain't going with him or whosoever it may be the second exodus must the woman in revelation 12 must flee she must flee she must flee into the wilderness brothers and sisters i'm telling you so you know you have to understand scriptures and understand bible understand the end times and where we are so that you, you don't get deceived and you can fit things appropriately so right after our second exodus six seal opens up um prophetic theme song so prophetic banner is called we are near because we are near it's not only a slogan we are near brothers and sisters and the prophetic theme song is called we are near and the song goes like this how now you are on now you are on now you are on now oh now you are on now you are Oh, now you are now. Hallelujah. Yes, we are near, and we can sing that song with right confidence. All right, I have two ministries one for the end time prophetic, and one for the Hebrew. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, brothers and sisters, hallelujah. I just want to quickly um, jump on here and talk about something that is raised in my spirit. And, you know, brothers and sisters, when we talk about the three days and nights of darkness, I've talked about this a lot. And sometimes when I do talk about it ever so often, I believe that some brothers and sisters think, oh, your sister Karen goes again, talking about the three days of darkness and all of this and all of that. Uh, yesterday I put up a video concerning um, a vision that the Most High has given to me um, that I saw uh, Moses all right, proclaiming or calling down the three days of darkness upon Egypt. And uh, some, some brothers and sisters in the comment section, uh, you know, they were like saying, oh, she's always going on about the three days of darkness she's been talking about it for years and nothing has happened that is a very foolish and ignorant mentality to have absolutely absolutely foolish and, and ignorant because if you look back in time people like all the prophets because even up until now some parts of the old testament has not been fulfilled and how long is the old testament written yeah, youngs. We're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And still, some of the prophecies are not fulfilled. So if I prophesy about the three days of darkness since 2018, you know, what, four or five years, six, five, six, seven years ago, that's nothing. <laughs> that's like, half a milliseconds in the eyes of the lord but yes to us it seems like forever but you know what brothers and sisters the most is patient he's patient he's long suffering and he's slow in anger and let me tell you something when the prophets and the prophetesses comes out and they warn do not take it lightly because i'm telling you these people who mock and scoff 
and laugh and share and come on the, this channel in the comment section to cause frictions and problems. Let me tell you something. When this darkness falls, you make sure that you're on the right side of history because many, many people are going to die. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you read the book of just, 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 Jaffa, Jaffa, right? Jaffa. If you read the book of Jaffa, that's one of the book that the Catholics have taken out of the Bible. But that goes into details. I think it's Jaffa, Joshua, Josh, not Joshua, Joshua, Josh, J A S P H E R. That's J A S P H E R. It's, the the s is i think is silent just jasha jasha or something like that right and um, if you read that book one of the book of the um apophica that they've taken out jasha chapter um 80 i think i think it's chapter 80 it talks about it goes into details of the three days of darkness so what's happening in that book and um, that the catholic has taken out of the bible is that it um it talks about more details. So in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 onwards, it talks about the three days of darkness. Okay. You notice in that book, <laughs> in, in, in Exodus, it didn't talk about people dying. And that is the Israelites, some of the Israelites who were disobedient, that was killed in the three days of darkness. In the book of Jes Jephthah, Okay, Joshua, I'm so I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. Um, it's annoying me because I can't even pronounce the word, the word properly. Oh, Jasper, so it's a Jasper, right? In the book of Jasper, um, I think it's chapter eighty or chapter eighty-one. It tells us that that Moses um obviously stretched forth his hands, and darkness came upon Egypt. And also in Goshen, where the Hebrew Israelites were a highest chosen seed, a highest people. But unlike the book of Exodus, which just says, you know, darkness came, no man moved from their dwellings, and yeah, everybody was stuck in darkness, but Israel had light in their dwelling, that was it. But Jasper went on further to say that <clears throat> after the three days of darkness, the Bible says that... Um, that the Hebrew Israelites buried their dead. Because many of the Hebrews died. Can you believe that? These are God's chosen people. This, this is a... This, brothers and sisters, I don't think people understand how serious the three days of darkness is. It's not just some little darkness that's coming. This is, this is a plague. This is demonic. That higher is sending into the world. The Bible says that in Jasper, it says that that after the three days of darkness, that the Hebrew Yeshahelite buried their dead. The darkness killed them. And the Bible explained the reasons why the darkness killed them. Why? Because they were disobedient. All I'm saying to brothers and sisters, you have time to do what you have to do. But time is going to run out. I understand if people just don't believe in the three days of darkness. And that is, well, it's not fine. But that is up to people. All right? Because everybody's entitled to their own belief. But you don't go out mocking and scoffing. That's the difference. There's a difference in not believing. And there's a difference in mocking and scoffing. Right? And, 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 and sowing discord amongst brothers and sisters on this channel who want to learn like i say the bible is very clear that ahia through the three days of darkness killed some of the hebrews because they were there they were disobedient and it's nothing different from when they were in the wilderness because Ahaya had to kill off that, that generation because they were just mocking and scoffing and complaining and murmuring, you know, on poor Moses. So Ahaya did what he had to do. But the three days and nights of darkness, brothers and sisters, you know, it is real. And, and, and really and truly, this video is for brothers and sisters who believe and know that the three days of darkness is real. So, um... 
I just want to touch a little bit on, uh, I want to say, I want to call it survival kit for the three days and nights of darkness. I think that some of us pretty on this channel who understands about the darkness coming that we we already know some of us all right um the things that we're going to need to survive or to go through the the, the plague of darkness that is coming upon the earth um but for those brothers and sisters who are new to the channel and wants to understand more about the darkness uh, this is just a little run through because from time to time, to be fair, from time to time, I do little videos concerning what you need for the three days of the nights of darkness. OK, so um, first and foremost, let, let me just say you might be saying, oh, Sister Karen, where is this darkness coming from? Where in the Bible? Well, the first darkness happened in Exodus chapter 10 verse 21 onwards read that you'll see that's the first darkness that is one of the 10 plagues of egypt is the three days and nights of darkness and the most star is going to bring that plague back if you read in deuteronomy the bible is very clear ahia says that it's going to bring the plagues that went upon egypt and other plagues that is not written in the book Come on, no church. So this that I'm talking about is something that is going to reoccur. So the three days and nights of darkness is going to happen again. Just read the Bible. Go into Deuteronomy, I think, 28. I think it's Deuteronomy 28, where the Most High says that he's going to bring back the plagues of Egypt plus other plagues that's not written in the Bible. This is serious. So we already know, those of us who are in end time prophecies, we already know that three days, of, three days and nights of darkness is coming. It's one of the plagues, right? So, but also the book of Amos chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. If you read that as well, that gives you a clue of what the Most High is going to do. So you need to read that for yourself. Amos 8, verse 9 and 10. Please read that for yourself, okay? Right, okay. So, now... The three days of darkness is an indignation of the Most High. When I talk about indignation, I'm talking about the wrath. Indignation means wrath of Ahia. That's all indignation means. It means the wrath of Ahia. Now, if you go to Isaiah, and I'm always getting this upside down. I think it's Isaiah 20 verse 26 or 26 verse 20. I do beg your pardon. All right. Now, in that scripture... Watch this, because Ahia has many, 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 many rafts to come. It's not just one raft, many, many rafts, okay? And the three days of darkness, or, or the plagues of Egypt, Egypt, sorry, or the plague of Egypt is um, part of his wrath, okay, upon the wicked, upon Pharaoh. So one of the wrath that he's going to use, like I say, our indignation is the three days of darkness. So when you read Isaiah chapter 20, verse 26 or verse 20 or isaiah 26 verse 20 the bible says that ahia says gave out a, um, a declaration to his people and he says come my people hide thyself into what thy chambers for a little while until the wrath be overpassed so because he has many wrath so we know that the three days and nights of darkness is 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 one of the wraths of ahia so listen very carefully what ahia says come my people and do what hide yourself so when the three days and when the three days and nights of darkness is coming the most is not expecting you to stand upside outside glaring in the in the sky because you will be killed because you cannot handle the darkness. The only people that can handle the, dark, the darkness is the fallen angels and the demonic or those who are possessed with Satan's spirit. But you as a human being, you cannot, and I repeat, you cannot handle the darkness. That is the reason why the Most High said, hide yourself for a little while into your homes. So that means no peeping through the window, no, no drawing your curtain and looking what's going outside because whatever is going outside, your mind cannot handle it. I showed me in a vision. He cannot lie. He never lies. I was with somebody 
when the three days in the vision, the three days and nights of darkness was happening outside. And I said to the person, whatever you do, do not look through the window. They wanted to look. I beg and I plead. I said, please don't do it. And they drew back the curtain, tear down the, um, what do you call it? The back, the black bin liner, which I'm going to talk to you about. And they looked through the window. Brothers and sisters, they went mad. They, they, they were psychotic. Because whatever they saw, their spirit couldn't handle it. They went psychotic in the home. I'm telling you. So when the Lord said, hide yourself, it, hiding yourself means locking yourself in your room. Not, well, lock the doors, right? Lock the doors behind you. Do the things to the curtains, so the window. So the first thing that I'm going to say that you're going to need um, something that's going to stop you from, you know, wanting to peep outside. So we're or them peeping inside looking at you. So we're saying that black bags or, or um, black bin liners and duct tapes. You're going to need that to just use a black bin liners or, and, and duct tape to tape up your window. So everything is pitch black. Tape up the um your letterbox. Alright. Anywhere anywhere in the house that you know you're going to use. Okay. And it's got windows. Your bathroom or your kitchen, wherever in the house that it's got windows, you tape it up. Because them things are gonna try to peep into your homes. Because the darkness is basically it's a plague. And it's basically demons. That is the darkness. That is it. So the Bible says that in Egypt, when the darkness fell in, in Moses' time, when Moses called down the three days of darkness, the Bible says that no man, watch this, no man moved from their dwelling. If, there was, if the darkness come and they were, they were walking, they have to stand in that place. They couldn't sit down. They couldn't move. They couldn't do anything. If the darkness came and they were sitting, they got to sit in that place. They couldn't move. If they were lying down, it's the same thing. So what I believe that the darkness is so gross and so thick and so fearful that, you know, it's like watching a scary movie and getting extremely fearful. Well, it's way past that. It's a, it's a fear that is demonic. And, uh, and the darkness is so gross that it's heavy. So it comes with fear. It's a plague, isn't it? You know, it's a plague of fear. And we know that when people get too fearful, they have heart attacks. That's what happened. <laughs> there's no, there's no if, buts, or maybe because you just think that something is coming to get you. You understand? Because of that fear that's, that's, that's crippling you. So, um, Part of the survival kit of the three days of darkness is your duct tape and your black bin liners. If you don't have black bin liners, I suppose you can use anything that's going to block out the, um, that, not, that you can't see outside and they ca cannot see inside. That is the truth, brothers and sisters. Anything that's going to block. But the black, the black bin liners is the best thing, I would say. So you can use other things like... Some people have foil or things like that. If you want to use that, you know, you can do that. That's not a problem. Um, and then you draw your normal curtain or shut your blinds once you use the bin back. Now, the other thing that you really and truly need to have, and I talk about this in the vision yesterday, is bee wax candle. Yes, I know that they're expensive and stuff like that, but you're going to need candles because when the darkness falls, it is going to hit the power grid because it's so heavy. And even if the power grid was not hit, your electric light could not penetrate the darkness. Like, it's no point. You can switch it on, but you won't see any electric light. You can turn on your bedside lamp. You won't see nothing. Because that, the, darkness is, the darkness is so thick. So you're going to need um, bee wax candle. The reason why I would say that. Because with the scented candles. You see scented candles. Some of, the, <laughs> some of these scented candles are used for the occultic. And colorful candles. Like a black and a red. And all sorts. It's used for demonic stuff. And summoning demons and stuff like that. So you really you want to stay away from scented candles. You want to just stick to your normal. Unscented. Bee wax candle. That, that is the preferred. Um, candlelight. Because. I believe that. 
you know, with a candle, especially the Biwa candle, for some reason. And I, I cannot explain it to you, brothers and sisters. But for some reason, I do believe that the bee wax candle will pen, will somehow you get you can, you will able to see whether everybody, whether you're a sinner or you're you know I don't know if they're gonna see with the bee wax candle. I don't know, but I certainly the children of the Most Higher, those who are, who serve the Lord higher in spirit and in truth. When the three days of darkness fall and they light their candles, then light will come in the room. Not only the light from the candle will come into the room, but I do believe that there's going to be some form of transformation. That the true believers, they're going to shine. Because I saw that in a vision as well. That those who belong to the most uh, higher, the eyes just lit up. Wow. Sort of like Moses type business going on. That's all I can put it. And family members who, you know, are not transforming because they're wicked. Uh, they're going to see you. Right? They're going to see you and see the glory of the most star on you. And then they're going to know that, that you are true born again. Because some of them doubt us, ain't it? And say that we're not living right and with this or with that. And all sorts of wicked things they said about us, right? But on the three days of nights of darkness, when we begin to glow in this thick darkness, then they're going to say that, wow. And some of them are going to repent and come to the most time. Many people will get saved in the three days of darkness, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, they're going to. And they're going to realize that higher is real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to the most high. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Um, so that's a candle business. Obviously, um, you're going to need non-perishable food. Water is a must. You know, brothers and sisters, I always say about this, whenever there's destruction, people get thirsty. I think because of the panic that's going on and the worrying. So automatically, the body just gets thirsty for some reason so you're going to need water that can last you for at least more than three days because after the darkness disappears um things are going to be down for a little while isn't it brothers and sisters so you're going to need um water that will sustain you for a bit a, a good period of time maybe a week or stuff like that and then the non-perishable food okay where you don't have to really you know, um, one of the things that I would say to brothers and sisters, try your best and get um, uh, what you call it, a, a thermos. A thermos, a big thermos because, and I'll explain it to you. Try to get a big thermos because when the darkness is coming, um, you will have a bit of time to fill up your thermos. Because there won't be any light, um, you know, and there probably won't be any gas to cook your food. So you're going to survive a non-perishable unless you've got gas stove, um, you know, cold stove in your house or something like that that don't use gas or electric. Now you can, you know, cook your food. But I do believe that for probably three days, well, not probably, for three days, it's going to be after being non-perishable. So you're going to need hot water to at least make some tea or make some hot, put some hot water to your noodles, you know, your cup noodles and stuff like that. Now, when the darkness is falling, brothers and sisters, um, what is going to happen when the darkness begins to fall? Um, what the Lord has shown me over the years, and this has never, ever, ever, ever changed. What Ahaya has shown me over the years concerning the three days of darkness, that it's going to come in like an invading army. It's going to be very, very slow. So by the time you see the sky goes pitch black, because when you look up in the sky, the sky is pitch black, but your surrounding is full, is, is still got light. You still can see, right? You can see, you still can see the electric going on and everything because the, the darkness has not hit the power grid. So because the darkness is coming in slowly. So you're going to have about an hour. You're going to have about one hour to tape up your window with the black bin liners and using the duct tape. Um, within that hour to boil your kettle, um, to just prepare and go in a room. What do you want to use one room for the whole family? I would suggest that. So if you've got a bedroom or you want to use a front room or the living room because it's bigger, just draw the mattresses off the beds and bring them, bring them in the biggest room you have, where there's one or two or three mattresses so that y'all can sleep in one room. All right. And you, you know, you know, put your bin liner over that window 
um, you put it also um, the letter box if you got a hole in it because these demons are cheeky they're gonna try to open and push their hands through your letter box I'm telling you brothers and sisters right um, obviously where the toilets are concerned um, you won't have any water because the grid is off so everything will be will be turned off so I will <laughs> I haven't thought about this. Disposable toilets. I know, brothers and sisters, I know it sounds a bit gross, but, you know, it is what it is, isn't it, really and truly? So you've got to have disposable toilet with lots of bin bags to do your business and put it away somewhere in a different room or whatever. So whatever room that you're going to use, just make sure you have your, it's, it's all sealed up. All right? It's all sealed up, brothers and sisters. Um, because the thing about it is that the temptation outside is going to be real. So that's a bin liner. That's your, your toilet, disposal toilet, obviously kitchen rolls, kitchen towel, kitchen toilet papers, um, your non-perishable, your water, and obviously, you know, your Bible, because you're going to be praying and asking the most uh, higher. That's the time to just go into fellowship, because the thing about it is that outside is going to be distracting, because Satan is going to be very, very, very wicked and lie. So he's going to speak into all sorts of people that you know. Uh-huh. Also, don't even, listen. Even he's going to probably come in your dead loved one. Somebody that you absolutely love and cherish. And you hear them knocking at the door. It's me. It's me. Open up. Don't you dare open that door. Because you have to remember. One thing you remember, brothers and sisters, that no human being, no human being can walk in that darkness. Because the Bible is very clear. Exodus chapter 10 verse 21 onwards is very clear. The Bible says that no man, no man moved from their dwelling when the darkness come if the darkness caught them walking they stood standing they have to stop walk and stay standing for three days if the darkness caught them sitting that is what it is if the darkness caught them laying down then that is what it is they cannot move so for you to be in your house in the height of the darkness and people knocking at your door or you hear police and soldier outside or you hear helicopter police helicopter and sirens going off that's satan that's the demons making them noises i cannot lie he showed me everything in a vision and i've and i've done the vision already the most I cannot lie, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, this three days of darkness is coming. So don't let anybody fool you and tell you that, oh, it's not going to happen. Ahia says that, that the plague is going to bring back the plagues of Egypt and other plagues that's not written in the book. So why are we running away from the three days and nights of darkness? Because people are scared. Because they're not holy and they're not righteous. And they don't want the judgment of Ahia upon the earth. But it's coming, brothers and sisters. You need to read Amos 8, verse 9 and 10. You have to read that scripture. So, whatever you do, you do not go outside. Like, you don't. And don't be tempted to look through. You might be hearing people walking up and down the street and you're thinking, oh my days, uh, darkness is outside, so why are these people? You might hear like people coming from club. <laughs> laughing and talking and acting drunk that's demons don't you dare open up whatever you do well they won't be able to move from your dwellings anyways because you'll be <laughs> you know you'll be stuck where you are but the illusion is real all right the illusion is real um so this is the thing you need brothers and sisters to survive the three days of darkness all right um your black bin liners duct tape water non-perishable food disposable toilet um bin liners um and um what else your bible obviously everybody in one room if it's possible the biggest room in the house just put your beds down there Take the mattresses off if you can. You'll have a one hour to do this. Because when the dark <laughs> mighty God of creation. Because when the darkness falls, brothers and sisters, it's just gonna fall like rain. Coming down very slowly. 
very, very into the whole entire place. You can't even see your hands. Almighty God of creation, this is a serious judgment coming upon the earth. Amos chapter 8 verse 9 and 10, the Bible says that the higher is going to darken the earth in a clear day that he's going to cause the sun to go down at noon. He even gives you the time. Yes, it doesn't say three days, but it doesn't have to say three days because you just need to look in the Bible where a higher is dark in the earth. And you'll see that. Or uh, dark in Egypt, and you'll see that it's in, the, it's in Moses' time. So, this thing is coming, <clears throat> and it is real. If you have any more thing to tell brothers and sisters that you think I've left out, just put it in the comment section. Especially for those who are new to the three days and nights of darkness. It's coming, brothers and sisters. Don't don't mind us. Listen to me. Anybody come in the comment out. I need your help, brothers and sisters. Anybody. Because this is your channel, right? This is your home. So you've got to take care of it. Don't be seeing comment that's rude and ignorant and ignore it. And say, no, it's not my channel, so I don't care. No, you're part of this community. And you have to understand that there are other people who watch this channel who may not understand like you and get confused. So what I would say to brothers and sisters is that if you see comments in the comment section that is not of the Lord, you can, in, in love, rebuke them. And show them a more perfect way and said, listen, this is it, this is it, so on and so forth. Because you have some people that's very, very rude. Uh, you got some definitely witches and warlocks who watch this channel. And they'll come in the comment section and they'll carry on silly. But, um, and you have, obviously you got this, the, um, the new sense ones, isn't it? So yes, brothers and sisters, so be bold, be strong, be courageous, walk with Ahaya, just like Enoch. Um, of the mindset of Job, all praises, all beautiful praises to the most uh, Ahaya who lives above the heavens. Ahaya, eternally bless you. I love you all, and I will see you soon, someday in glory. In Yesaya's holy name, amen and amen. Benediction, Jude chapter 1, verses 12. Jude chapter 1 verses 24 to 25 the Bible reads now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you forth less before the presence of his glory with um, exceeding joy to the only wise Isaiah our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen and amen amen blessings amen